Where are you from? This simple, frequently asked question is something that I find hard to grapple with. You might be thinking, why? After all, I could start by saying I live in the large metropolitan city of London. I could say I visit New York a lot, so technically could be from there. However, I catch myself refusing to say where I'm truly and genetically from, which is Georgia. So what do you think of the word when you hear Georgia? Let me guess, you might be thinking of the US state, the Love Island star, Georgia Steele, <laughs> and even the cringeworthy TV show, Ginny and Georgia. However, this is not the Georgia I'll be addressing today. This is my Georgia, a country that was part of the former Soviet Union that lies in the Caucasus and borders Armenia, Turkey, Iran, and Azerbaijan, and Russia. So now your thoughts are probably, why can't she say she's from there? I don't blame you. In fact, I often ask myself the very same question. Why am I in denial of my ethnic origins? So after some very hard thinking and deep, deep analysis, I think I've successfully compiled my two reasons. My first reason is other people's and even Google's misconceptions. It's hardly surprising that when you type in Georgia into Safari, it comes up with this. And when I do say I'm from there, I'm usually greeted with the response of, oh, wow, I've been to Atlanta before. <laughs> My second reason is cultural self-consciousness, perhaps misplaced for kindness. In other words, I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable when they don't know where I'm from, as this makes every casual, where are you from, situation unnecessarily awkward. However, even my own family is in denial. Perhaps this can be showcased by the fact that I never learnt Georgian properly. I do know a bit, however my exposure to it has been quite limited. It sounds and looks something like this. Achu achu slenu, zai gagachenu. It's quite a mouthful, to say the least, but I definitely didn't say some complicated phrase. It quite literally means, rock rock your horse. And it's something I remember as a memory from my great-great-grandmother who lives until 106 when she taught it to me. However, let's compare this to the languages that I can speak fluently. My English is not too bad, and the Russian that I've learned to speak can get me through any day. So when I asked my mother why she didn't teach me and my brother Georgian, her response was simply, no one speaks it anyway. You should learn Russian. It will be more useful. So I abided by this logic and decided to take Russian GCSE and A-level. But the denial doesn't stop there. My maternal grandparents, both of whom were born and bred Georgians, physically left the country due to the limited opportunities and reshaped their Georgian identity when they moved to America. Suddenly, their original names of Demuri Sapiashvili and Bela Yobiashvili turned into Bela Sapir and Tamir Sapir and Bela Joseph. I was also worried that our family traditions, which I'm sure many of you sitting here have, were soon going to be lost as well. These include baking khachapuri, a Georgian cheese dish, every time I went to visit my extended family. Thankfully, this tradition is still going strong. My ultimate realization is that this concept of denial does not only apply to me. What my parents did, I'm not trying to take a dig at, in prioritizing a more powerful language is part of a damaging pattern in world history. To those of you familiar with The Great Gatsby, this can be similarly seen by the main character changing his name from James Gatz to Jay Gatsby as a way of resisting his European roots throughout the First World War. But let me put it in another perspective. Do we choose between the small coffee shop or the Starbucks on the corner of the street? Our instinct would automatically lead us to the larger firm, something we know and are comfortable with. And this can be mirrored by the world slowly becoming more dominated by bigger corporations, which is similarly seen in various cultures. Similar to Georgia, there are many other countries that are usually forgotten about, such as Liechtenstein, Tajikistan, Andorra, and more. We need to stand up for the smaller cultures, countries, and enterprises. The embarrassment that some have when not knowing a specific country should be transformed into curiosity to further preserve the heritages that are on the brink of being overlooked. And, especially today, on a geopolitical level, the denial of culture can lead to multiple wars and the wiping out of entire nations and ethnic groups. So, 
Other than the fact of me always, always feeling left out, my grandma, aunt, and mum would speak of something in Georgian on purpose so I wouldn't know. I realised this is how cultures get lost, and how some cultures become commercially more powerful than others, which creates a cultural imbalance and inequality. Now, don't worry, I'm not asking for all of you to go home and write a biography on each country that you've never heard of. But what I, what I am asking is that we, as a population, start to celebrate those subcultures in order to pre preserve them from going extinct. And I hope that you will feel a little bit more encouraged and motivated to research a little bit about a country that you've never heard of. Thank you.